Jury selection continues in the Derek Chauvin trial with a significant new wrinkle to deal with today. The entire process now impacted by the $27 million settlement being paid out to the Floyd family as part of a civil lawsuit. Fox 9's Paul Bloom joining us now with more on today's proceedings. Paul. Kelsey and Randy, Judge Peter Cahill not shy in sharing his frustration here with the timing of this record-breaking $27 million civil settlement calling the timing unfortunate and saying, frankly, he wishes that city of Minneapolis officials would just stop talking about this case. Tonight, the question, how much damage has been inflicted on his prospective jury pool? The goal of this system is to provide a fair trial, and this is not fair. Derek Chauvin's defense attorney, Eric Nelson, outraged by the Friday announcement of a $27 million civil settlement between the city of Minneapolis and the family of George Floyd. Nelson extremely concerned about news headlines possibly tainting the jury pool in the criminal case, asking Judge Peter Cahill to possibly delay the trial, move it out of Hennepin County, or at the very least, re-question the seven prospective jurors already seated in the event. Their opinions may have now shifted. Cahill said he does indeed plan to recall those seven before opening statements. You would agree it's unfortunate, wouldn't you? That it's unfortunate? That we have this reported all over the media when we're in the midst of jury selection as far as Yeah, time. it's certainly not my preference, Your Honor. I don't even know which way that cuts, <laughs> if that cuts for us, if that cuts against us. Well, one prospective juror acknowledged she heard about the civil settlement in a radio report and was eventually dismissed for cause by Cahill. The two sides were able to make some progress on jury selection Monday. Two additional jurors seated, including number 55, a white woman in her 50s, who admitted she could not watch the full video of Floyd's deadly arrest. And juror number 52, a black man and youth sports coach in his 30s, who had his own thoughts about what was captured on camera at 38th in Chicago. Is it fair to say that you formed an opinion about what was happening in that video simply based on watching that video or what parts of it you watched? I would say it's the fact that someone was har harming someone else from what I'm seeing and I just couldn't watch that. As for where we stand tonight, nine jurors now seated, totaling six men, three women. The court describing four people of color, including two black men, and a multiracial woman. Court resumes here at the Hennepin County Government Center on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Jury selection getting underway at 9 o'clock. We're live in downtown Minneapolis tonight. Paul Bloom, Fox 9. Some major developments today in the trial for Derek Chauvin. Two previously seated jurors were dismissed this morning by Judge Peter Cahill. They were called back to answer some questions surrounding a $27 million civil settlement from the city of Minneapolis for the family of George Floyd. That $27 million settlement announced by the city of Minneapolis came after those jurors were selected to serve on the panel. Our Paul Bloom joins us live from outside the Hennepin County Government Center tonight. So, Paul, the judge asked each of the seven, does news of the settlement impact their ability to remain impartial? And he got some pretty honest answers. Yeah, really a fascinating start to the court day this morning, Amy and Randy. He basically had all seven of these members individually joined by Zoom. And he went boom, 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 straight down the list. He unilaterally handled the questioning and the decision making about whether to keep them. Several of them had said that they had heard news of it, seen a headline. And in the end, he did dismiss two jurors, a Hispanic a uh, man and uh, a white man in his 30s, the, the guy we've talked about who's getting married May 1st down in Florida. Both of those men uh, were dismissed for cause because they had seen and heard about the headline and that that would impact uh, their ability to be fair and impartial in the courtroom. He did allow one or two others who had heard about it uh, to remain on the case. Uh, but what was interesting, by the end of the day, two more jurors were seated, bringing us right back to that total of nine where we had left off, so it almost felt like today didn't really happen. We end the day with nine jurors seated for this uh, trial. Yeah, the judge at the very end of the day saying, well, at least we're not behind anymore. So, Paul, uh, what can you tell us about these two new jurors? Both in their 40s, a black man, white woman. Uh, so our, our, our panel is five men, four women, uh, five white, four people of color. Seems like a pretty good uh, balance at this point. Uh, we shall see. Jury, jury selection uh, will resume here tomorrow morning. Of course, looking for 14, the 12 to deliberate, and two alternates. Paul, there was also an interesting moment where uh, Judge Cahill expressed some concern over some of the things being reported in the media. What's that all about? 
Yeah, he was angry this morning. If you joined that live feed right away at 845, 850 this morning, uh, he let us let it be known. Uh, but basically, as you guys know, we have two pool reporters in that courtroom, a print reporter and a broadcast reporter. I was in there uh, the first day of the trial on Monday as the uh, broadcast pool. But we share our notes uh, with the whole media uh, community that's covering this trial. And basically within our notes, uh, we included some details apparently yesterday, the reporters did, uh, that basically upset the judge, uh, some specifics about security that uh, rubbed him the wrong way. Also, uh, a reference to perhaps trying to read a notebook or a legal pad on one of the council tables of one of the trial participants. He said he would not tolerate that. Obviously, there's this fine line, this balance between what the court wants, what the media wants. Uh, uh, for those that can't see uh, what the TV cameras, the live stream uh, is picking up. So he made it clear he won't be afraid to kick us out of that courtroom. Uh, but hopefully uh, his uh, anger has calmed down. The media understands his uh, position. Uh, he understands our position. And hopefully uh, we all move forward from here. All right. Yeah, it could be a long couple months. So that uh, arrangement should be solid. Thank you, Paul. That settlement has impacted this jury selection, with several jurors saying they can't remain impartial after hearing the news. And Fox 9's Paul Bloom is covering this trial for us. Paul, despite a few setbacks to, from yesterday, there was more progress made today. Kelsey and Amy, quite a bit of progress. Three additional jurors have been seated, bringing this jury uh, jury total at this point to 12. Of course, the court looking for 14, 12 to deliberate and two alternates. But it shouldn't surprise anybody if you've tuned into the live stream of this uh, jury questioning process. The first question all these prospective jurors are getting is whether or not they've heard anything about the recent $27 million civil settlement and whether it would impact their ability to serve impartially. Well, today, reporters got a chance at City Hall to grill some of the officials about why they announced it right in the middle of jury selection. There's no guarantee, for instance, that that deal would be available two, four, six, eight weeks from now or six months from now. And we decided to move forward with the Floyd family when all was said and done. Well, city officials, they're disputing the notion that the settlement has adversely impacted the criminal case. Of course, two previously seated jurors were dismissed on Wednesday because of their knowledge of it and how it was likely to in influence their impartiality in the courtroom late today. You may have heard Judge Cahill exploding. He clearly frustrated by all the talk of the civil, civil settlement. As for today's jury selection, two new jurors seated, number 91, a black retired grandmother who at one point in her life lived pretty close to 38th and Chicago, as well as juror 89. Here she is, a nurse from Medina. Uh, pay is terrible, <laughs> right, to be a juror. Uh, it's a hard job. It requires a lot of attention. Why should you be a juror on this case? I think I can be impartial and listen to instructions and go with what I'm given and ignore the outside stuff. Ignore that outside stuff. Going to be hard to do. Here's a look at the jury makeup at this point. Twelve folks on this jury. Seven women. We've shifted now female heavy. Five men. Six people of color. So six and six straight down the middle there. And just two left before opening statements, Amy, currently scheduled for March 29th. Mm -hmm. And Paul, we are waiting on some pretty big rulings tomorrow by Judge Cahill. What can you tell us about those? Yep, he's put off three huge rulings for tomorrow morning. We will get them. Two defense motions based on pretrial publicity. One to move the case out of Hennepin County. Another one, just a general overall delay. He's also got to weigh in on some critical evidence that George Floyd prior arrest with MPD where some, there's some body camera footage that the defense says shows some very similar behaviors uh, between Floyd's uh, interaction with police a year before uh, his death. Obviously important to the defense and the prosecution if that evidence gets in. We'll of course have it all for you tomorrow morning.